Hello Value Investors, thank you for joining me. Today we're going to talk about Slack and why I believe the Slack is already fully priced. So in this video we're going to talk about the work from home theme and why I can see evidence that the work from home theme, work from home theme might have been overstretched. Then we're going to talk about Slack's revenue guidance and why that's important. Then we're going to bring in two different metrics to substantiate my claim that Slack is overvalued. Finally, we're going to bring it all together and talk about its valuation. Before we get started though, if you haven't done so already, don't forget to check out my marketplace on Seeking Alpha. It's called Deep Value Returns. I'll tell you the stocks I own and why with balanced arguments for the stocks I own. You're welcome to do a totally free trial to see if it suits you. So let's get started. So the biggest thing here is that right now this whole work from home theme has maybe got carried away. So in the summer, we were seeing a lot of results that Q2 had really pulled in a lot of digital acceleration from three, four years out. And that may have happened, but right now what I'm seeing from a few companies that have reported, including Fastly, IBM and Netflix, it seems that it was just a pull in and that's not going to be the new normal. And I think that there's going to be a re-rating in many of these stocks such as Slack. So for that small amount of pull in, investors have been willing to pay exorbitant multiples for what's really, let's say, 20 times sales, 20 times forward sales, which is just crazy. So, and I myself have paid for these stocks, some of these stocks, none of the ones I mentioned here, but I can really say that, yeah, I, you know, it's very easy to get carried away. So here's the thing, right? So Slack reported its earnings back in September. At the time, the stock did sell off. It has recuperated since, but investors haven't really paid enough attention here. And I think that this is important. So the guidance points that Slack is going to be, so Slack's fiscal year and calendar year slightly misaligned. Slack is right now in Q3 21. So the guidance is pointing towards the back end of fiscal 21 for it to have sub 30% growth rates. So this is very important because this shows that Slack is not really as disruptive as we were led to believe. If you look to how Slack was doing at the start of the year when it was growing at close to 50% year over year growth rates, for it to in a period of 12 months to be coming down to sub 30% is quite meaningful. Another two metrics that I want to point out is that Slack's buildings, I know buildings can be quite noisy, but it is a strong forward looking indicator. And the buildings came in at 25% year over year increase. So again, if buildings are not coming in that strong, it's going to be difficult for, for Slack to outgrow the buildings. So the revenue growth rates higher than buildings, obviously. Again, on the rule of 40, it shows that on the rule of 40, towards the back end of the year, Slack's rule of 40 is going to come in at approximately 35%. If you remember, the rule of 40 is just a measure that's in SaaS stocks that balance out revenue growth rates with bottom line profitability. So Slack is not faring too well there either. Then I'm going to talk about why. So at this moment in time, with Slack, investors are willing to pay 19 times forward sales. Investors have been willing to pay 20 times forward sales for companies growing at above 30%. Paying 19 times forward sales for a company rapidly decelerating growth rates, I think is too expensive. So, I hope you found this video useful and don't forget to check out my marketplace on Seeking Alpha. It's called Deep Value Returns and you, I'll tell you the stocks I own and why. We have a balanced argument for the stocks I own and you're more than welcome to do a totally free trial. I'll see you soon.